right? This, uh, I, I went with uh, one of our parents, they say, all the kids have a cell phone. So they hardly every day, every, once a day, uh, once a week a day, they come and meet friends, but no, everybody is looking at their phone. You know, it's, it's, it's really, it actually some, some years ago, it's, I, I had that observation as well. Uh, our, our young members, okay, it was kind of starting to have maybe Facebook or whatever, or the, the smartphone just came out. They were all in a room supposed to have a meeting, but everybody's looking at it. They were just sitting very close. They're sitting right next to one another in a sofa. Then everybody was doing that. They're not talking to anyone else. It's just like that. They just stick with the device, okay? So parents, please, okay, especially when you have young children, force them to have downtime. Confiscate the cell phone, <laughs> all right? Find, they have to know how to interact with real people. Okay, not, not, not a, a sticker, not something cute and funny or just some, some silly words, okay? So this is, this is important because look at here, we bind ourselves. We bind ourselves with what? Layer upon layer of the chains of attachment and affliction. And say, oh, I don't get a response. How come, you know, somebody is not, I send him a sticker or send her a sticker and, and there's no, re, no response? It's silly, okay? It's very silly. Actually, it's a very awful waste of time. All right. So, what are the specific ways uh, the Bodhisattva is capable of kind of helping? We say interceding, kind of, okay, it's, it's like, well, maybe in, in today's term, it's like Superman, okay, or whatever, coming in, okay, flying in. Well, in a sense, yes, but not so dramatic, all right. So, here we say there are seven difficulties or seven what we call calamities, all right. Oh, we say the first one is fire, flood, okay, uh, windstorms, okay, maybe here you can call that haze. Uh, weapons is like violence, physical violence is war, okay, evil spirits, okay, that's a, maybe, uh, today's Halloween, so <laughs> evil spirits, okay. Uh, imprisonment, imprisonment, and brigands, those are like thieves and robbers. Again, it's, it's like physical violence, all right, and they may come to steal your things. But these seven calamities, it sounds terrible. I mean, in this world that we live in, uh, the terrorism, the, the any kind of things that can happen to us, uh, it can be very scary. But you look at it, it's, it's because of what? Our three poisons. Okay, sometimes we attract those. It's our own doing, greed, anger, and ignorance. Okay, so we move on. So they say when you are angry, you have a black evil wind blowing in your sea. So what is our sea? Our sea is our own mind, our real own pure nature. So the sea is actually calm, but because the wind is blowing, so we have a storm. So recently we have some awful, awful hurricanes, right? Typhoons. Ignorance is also an evil wind, okay? It is called an affliction. So otherwise, without the wind of ignorance, without the wind of anger blowing, we can see our mind very well. We can see our mind very well, all right? And to counter what is that, okay, we, we say we have seven kinds of difficulties. We have, but there are also the seven treasures. We call the noble wealth. Uh, in Chinese, it's qi sheng tai, okay? They're noble. It's like the noble truth, right? It's faith, okay? We, all ha we must have faith before we learn Buddhism because to enter the ocean of the Dharma, we must have faith. And when we enter it, I say this is uh, Singaporeans will be very familiar, diligence, very hard working. So you have to work as hard in our practice. We have to move, to give as much, okay, of ourselves in our, in our, con in our cultivation, in our practice. And of course, Buddhism, I say, is founded on mo morals, so morality, okay, morals and ethics is the foundation. And then you say listening, what, okay, what is listening? It's listening to the Dharma listening to the Dharma. So, of course, some people can say that, oh, I don't like to, you know, be with a group of people and, and I don't like people in general. I can just study by myself, okay? Well, in a sense, it's okay, okay? Because we all need some downtime. We all need some personal private times. But uh, without people, you lack support, okay? Uh, we, we need to kind of talk about things. We need to kind of prove to ourselves and prove, and, and you have to kind of find, uh, 
fellowship, okay? We need fellowship, we need support. So we need to, to have other people. We need to listen, we need to have dialogue. That's why Q and A, right? And giving. Giving is like generosity or charity. It's, it's not just giving money. I mean, it's very easy to make a, a, a money donation, actually. Oh, here, you know, I have this extra five, oh, you can take all my change, okay? Oh, that's easy, because you, don't, you feel that you don't need it. There's something that we can very easily give. But giving includes what? Giving our time. Like I said, everybody has 24 hours. How much time can you offer to help others? How much time are we willing to give up texting, give up, you know, whatever, and use that time in making someone's lives better? Okay, so giving is important. And it's also giving of what? Giving of the Dharma. So I, I'm very honored to, to have the opportunity to share, to give the Dharma. And, and that's the Buddha said is the best giving. Okay, because with, uh, when you give or share the Dharma, you share the, the wisdom, you share the joy. Okay, so it's not just us benefiting. Everybody can benefit. And then it's like a candle, okay? The fire can, can carry on and on, and it can be endless, all right? And of course, wisdom. Wisdom is something everyone seeks. It's not, oh, I'm so smart, okay? Worldly smart, or, or sometimes worse, street smart, <laughs> they don't last. Okay, and they may not be useful for every occasion, but wisdom is to, we know when to step back. We know when that we have to, uh, we say, you know, uh, Master Singh Yun said the philosophy of being second. We don't have to be uh, the first. We don't have to be always number one, all right? To step back a little, we have more space. We have more space to develop. We have more space to grow. So it's like when we should step forward, when we should step back. That's wisdom. That takes wisdom. So, and of course, in Buddhism, that is, that is more than just give and take. That is enlightenment. That is what we call prashna, okay? And our conscience, again, is, is, is similar to morality. Our conscience is, is something inside us, actually, that we all have. But a lot of people will kind of cover it up. Oh, we have no conscience, okay? That's, that's without any conscience, okay? But it's important because conscience is human. Without conscience, that's inhuman. So do we consider ourselves a human being? All right, so this is something to think about as well. So these are things that we should all be seeking. And we say, because faith, here faith counters delusion, we say we are ignorant. We are confused, okay? We don't know what, what to believe. We don't know what to take. So it takes faith, okay? And of course, diligence counts as sloth, as being lazy. Morality leads to proper conduct. Because when we have ethics and morals, we would naturally, okay, conduct ourselves appropriately. And then, of course, listening to the Dharma would bring us the truth, okay? And giving would count as greed. Because instead of coveting, craving, okay, and desiring and wanting. These days, you say, it's not what we need, it's what we want, okay? It's what we want. So we want, we want gratification. We want this, we want that, we want to show off, we want to have the best of everything, uh, drive the latest model of cars, whatever, you know. Those are wants, those are not needs, okay? And wisdom, wisdom is here is the eyes for practice, okay? And conscience is, is actually humility. So it, well, when we have conscience, we recognize our inadequacies. We recognize that we need to, to do better. We need to be humble, okay? So those are the things that help us. That's why we call them the treasures or the wealth. And remember there, they say we seek, they're going into the ocean, right? Remember there's this part on, uh, if you have a group, if you're going to seek, in the old days, they say when you want to, do trades, sometimes you go into the ocean for treasures, you go into the mountains for treasures, okay? So actually, it's, it's looking inside us, okay? So when we can see the treasures that already have, that we already is inside us, within us, we all have treasures inside us, all right? So this is what the Buddha has taught us, that we all have the Buddha nature. We all have the potential, okay, to become a Buddha ourselves. So we have to recognize that, and we have to look for that treasure, we have to uncover that, okay? With that, we can overcome any kind of obstacles. 
And also, we say in, in the uh, sutra, I said, we say, hey, uh, some parents, uh, especially mothers, okay, they have two wishes. They want to have children, a son, a daughter. And of course, recently, uh, the, the biggest worldly news is uh, China is uh, kind of revoking the, the law of what they call the one-child policy. They can say, now, every family can have two kids, all right? So, I don't know, uh, Singapore always encourages, same with many, I think, today's uh, countries, in most countries, even places like Hong Kong, okay, they always encourage uh, families to have kids. And, and today I had the opportunity to, to, to spend some time with two wonderful girls here, and, and reminds me so much of my nieces back in Vancouver when they were kids, okay, and they were exactly two years apart, and they were chatty and happy, and, and, and I say, you, kids, kids are universal, okay? They have the same uh, kind of behavior. They have the same kind of request. They push their parents. They ask for this. They want to do that. They sing. They, and, then, and then when they're tired, you know, they sleep, <laughs> okay? It's like low battery, okay? <laughs> Unplug, <laughs> and, and then we take a nap, <laughs> and then they come back again very soon. So parents, when they seek son and daughter, now it's not just here. Uh, the symbolism between the behind a son and a daughter, a boy and a girl. So let's let we go, go move on that. Okay, the son. Okay, we want the son here. It says blessed with merit, virtue, and wisdom. Okay, so it's a, a smart, upstanding uh, young man, a boy that you may you we all want. Okay, we every parent will want that. And a daughter. Okay, daughter. We want them. To, uh, we want girls to be attractive. Okay, to be well formed. And it's someone who has planted the roots of virtue over lifetimes. So it's someone who came with a lot of blessing, okay? Uh, and we look at some babies. That, oh, this, this baby, Han Chang Fu Qi, Fu Xiang, we say, okay, right there you can say, oh, the baby is, is blessed, okay? But what is the symbolism? Male is the symbol of wisdom. And female, a, a girl, a daughter, is compassion. So this is one of the reasons all the Guan Yin, okay, here are women, right, are female figures, are, are manifestations of women. So that's why, okay, Sakyamuni Buddha asks us exhortation, practice, 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 okay. So we say in accepting and upholding, that means we recognize, we have faith in the, just in the name of Guan Yin Pusa, okay. And to uphold means to recite, to keep in mind, okay? To keep in mind all the time. So a lot of people, when they are kind of, if they're mindful enough, every step, if they're not talking to anyone, if they're not, or maybe they're driving, sometimes they, they kind of turn on, okay, the button here somewhere that they would have the Buddha's name or Guan Yin Fusa's name in their mind, okay? So that, that is very mindful. So accepting and upholding. Uh, Guan Yin Pusa's name can gain the benefit of boundless and countless merits. Okay, so this is what the Buddha taught us to do. Uh, but remember, don't tax, okay? And answer to the second question, uh, okay, what are the skillful means? So is it how does he come to the Saha world? So, you know, what happened? How come everybody in this world, okay, is, is so dedicated and they recognize Guan Yin, they recognize uh, the, the, the Pusa's strengths and powers. And then how does teach, how does he teach? Uh, here we, we use the word wandering. In Chinese is yao, the word yao is, is just going everywhere. Okay, it's not like, oh, okay, I have nothing to do, I just hang around, okay. It's not like that, okay, there's a purpose. So here we come the 33 manifestations. Okay, wandering, okay, so we have, we kind of start from the top, okay. And, and please don't think that, oh, of course, you know, we have to speak of higher ups first. I think it's just kind of easy. It's like these are more difficult to understand for maybe a lot of people. So it's kind of gradually taking us okay, step by step so we can recognize these. There are three what we call noble manifestations. Of course, the first one is the Buddha. And if you read about, uh, actually, if you, oh, Taipei Chan is coming up, right? So the Great Compassion Repentance Service. And inside, they say that actually Guan Yin is an ancient, ancient, ancient Buddha. Okay, so that's why they say that Guan Yin as a Pusa, as a Bodhisattva, in this Saha world, they say he's kind of Dao Jia, is kind of reversing the course 
Dao Jia Shen Chi Hang, the vessel, his vessel of compassion. It's like, okay, I take you across to the other shore. He's, he's already there, okay, he's already gained liberation. But I recognize that there's a lot of beings still on the other side that needs help. So he has to take his boat. Uh, I would say nowadays uh, the easiest to, to uh, kind of recognize is the situation in Europe. There's a lot of people, right? A lot of, they call migrants, or they're, they're actually, oh, they're, they're, they're refugees, they're in great suffering, they're kind of, they have to run away from their home because there's no way they can survive. Or in Africa, they try to cross the Mediterranean Ocean, right? So they're in great suffering. People die, remember that very, uh, there's very strong impact on the world is that the, the, the young boy drowned with a face down on the, you know, on the beach. That's a very strong image. So if you look at that and say, oh my, okay. So Guan Yin Kusa is like, he turned around and he looked, hey, there's still so many of us drowning in the ocean of suffering. There's so many of us struggling. So even as a Buddha, as an ancient Buddha, he come back again as what? A Bodhisattva. Just now, I think one of the slides said the Bodhisattva is a Buddha in training, okay? Or actually, my favorite analogy is like a PhD candidate, okay? He's got, done all his courses, his thesis are fine, and it's just like, almost like the last oral defense, okay? And, and then the Buddha is here. But, and, and it's easy to understand in a way that because of, if you have really, you have really good, uh, well, I really don't like the word IQ, Okay, so if you're really good at study, you're really sharp, you're very talented, and you enjoy, you really can take uh, different courses. Uh, oh, Joanne Bu Jiu Wei, right? <laughs> my, my fellow monastic and then her father is here. She's got, what, three master's degree, right? Okay, so she's a master in computer, she's a master in MBA, and she's got a master in Buddhism before she prog progressed to having a PhD, right? You know, I'm sure most of you would recognize her and know her because she's right from here, okay? So, is that because when someone with that kind of talent, with the, that kind of roots, it's like a, a bodhisattva, okay, I can, I can attain this, I can, okay, my, my vow, my study is in this field. Okay, I'm done, but I can do more. Okay, I found out that, hey, I still have the, the energy, I still have the, the time, and I can do more, I can take another course, okay? So it's like they take different vows. So, Guan Yin Pusa is coming back from being an ancient Buddha to become a Bodhisattva again. It's like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going back to study again. I'm a student again, okay? So here, one of the manifestations is a Buddha, even as a Buddha. And even Guan Yin is, was already a Buddha, but he can still kind of manifest as a Buddha. Or maybe we could just talk about these three. Patika Buddha is what? It's someone who doesn't need to, to be taught. They just observe, say, oh, this flower. If a particular Buddha can observe the flower from bud, it blooms, then eventually it blooms so much that it started to fade, the petals start to fall off, and then the whole thing maybe just withered away. They can already know, oh, okay, this is impermanence, okay? And the flower needs so many conditions to, to start out as a little bud, and a bigger one, and then bloom, and then in full bloom, and then it fell off, and so on. Oh, it's dependent on origination. Oh, it's emptiness. Because they have the roots. So that's particular Buddha, okay? And of course, we say Shravaka are the hearers or the listeners. They need to hear someone to speak to them or to read something that before they can understand, oh, okay, so, so this is the meaning of emptiness. Oh, so this, that is the meaning of dependent origination. They need to be taught, okay? So you say, hey, can Guan Yin do all of this? Yes, okay. So we look around. Guan Yin may not be just, just sitting up there or standing there, okay. Guan Yin may be right next to you. You go home, there may be Guan Yin there. But do we recognize him? I'm sure you've heard of a story. You heard a story that uh, this man was very bad-tempered, and he always kind of was mad at his mom. He was abusive. But he had some trouble, so he went to to a, a temple to pray. And this monk, uh, our Chan master maybe said, oh, you want to look for Guan Yin? Easy. When you see someone wearing the clothes inside out and the shoes are on the wrong feet, that's Guan Yin. And she was just, what? And he was just very puzzled. So he, okay, let's go home first. And he, was, he went home 
and the door was locked. He was bang, 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 okay? And then mom came out. Mom was very afraid of him because you know, this son is very vicious, okay? So mom came out, and he was cold, and so he wore wear his jacket inside out, and the shoes were on the wrong feet. He came out and opened the door, and whoa, that's Guan Yin, right? <laughs> so, so is Guan Yin, should, should Guan Yin be always be like, oh, with jewels and crowns and all beautiful? Not necessarily. So it's in our mind. Do, but we, do we recognize, can we see beyond the surface? Can we see beyond like outside appearance? Okay, that's the key. So Shravaka here, you know, you don't really have to say, okay, so let me check the 33 manifestation. Okay, first the Buddha, I can see a Buddha here. Second, okay, Pratika Buddha, where, where can I find a Pratika Buddha? <laughs> no way, okay. Okay, Shravaka, maybe Pero Mu is a Shravaka, <laughs> right? So a uh, Sing one, okay, oh, so, or maybe, maybe uh, your president is a Shravaka, okay? So, so don't need to know that. Anyone can be anyone, okay? Everyone can be someone. Okay, let's, let's move on. Now, these are, uh, okay, these are the three noble men. Okay, what we call the six celestial kings, okay? Now, these are very difficult because most of us, we haven't, maybe we have been to heaven, but we forgot. So these are all what we call celestial kings, celestial beings, okay? Say so King Brahma, Lord Sakra, and so on, okay? All these heavenly generals and celestial beings, uh, that's in all in the book, okay? So it's, it's something that is maybe a little beyond us, okay? But when you're, when you're talking about uh, the different realms of existence, okay? And then, and then we have what was Xiao Wang, okay? Okay, lesser king. Well, who is a lesser king? That's up to interpretation these days. Is Obama a, a king? Well, he's just president for eight years, okay? Or, Mr. or, or we here Singaporeans may consider Mr. Li Guangyao. <laughs> Okay, he's, he, he was like a king to us, or, or the founding father, right? Uh, maybe in, in Great Britain, in the UK, is Queen Elizabeth, okay? It, and she's pretty remarkable. She's going to be 19 years old, and she's been ruling for more than 60 years. She's very remarkable, okay? Or maybe someone in your community, an elder, okay? So here uh, at, in, in Singapore, in Blia, maybe your elder advisor, remember? So it's an elder, okay? And, and doesn't have to be old. Elder is not referring to age. So, you know, it doesn't have to be someone who is over 70, all right? So it's someone with, with a practice, someone with the morals, okay, and someone with the experience and the leadership, okay? And it can be a lay person. So it can be your neighbor sitting, someone next thing behind you, next, sitting next to you. Okay, and in the old days, because they're, they're kings and they're kingdoms and, and imperial courts, so there's the minister, okay? The minister will help the king. And because this is ancient India, the Brahmin. So Brahmin is, is what they call the, the, the high priest, okay? So it's, it's, the, it's the, 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 the Hindu uh, format. Because again, this is spoken in ancient India, okay? And then we have four manifestations as women. And who are these women? So it's the female elder, okay? It can be the wife, it can be even grandma, okay? Uh, a female lay person or any one of the volunteer, anybody here, okay? Uh, they work, they serve, okay? And of course, sometimes it's the minister's wife. Uh, there are a lot of officials, I think, in every... And sometimes their wife is very, is very, very uh, important person because the, the husbands many times would listen to the wives, <laughs> right? <laughs> the, the real boss is at home, right? <laughs> it's not the one running out to make money, <laughs> okay? That's the boss, okay? And the field Brahma. S same thing, same situation. Because the wife is the one that can hold the family together, okay? So those are key people. And then, okay, we have, we just mentioned a son and a daughter. So it's a young boy or a young girl. And there are stories that people are moved. It's like that, that young boy drowned on the beach. Uh, I read a news item that, uh, the, uh, well, that's, that's my second home. I, I'm also Canadian, okay? So in Canada, that image, that just that image of this little boy with a face down on the beach drowned. The whole country was shaken up. So Canada really want to help these refugees, help these migrants. Because you see this young boy, it's like anybody's son. It's like anybody's son or grandson or child. And just like that, gone. 
So, and, and also happens that I think uh, the boy's relative, a, I think it's a, either an uncle or, or some sort of close relative living in Canada. So they, they are very, very moved by just this image. So as a boy, a girl, so as a young person, it can have a huge impact on how we consider things, how we think that we can, we can conduct ourselves, how we can, what we can do, how we can help, okay? So this is the two manifestations as children. And then, now this is also difficult. These are like what we call the celestial beings. They are what we call the Dharma guardians, Tenlong Babu, okay? Uh, those of you who are, who are about my age, okay, you know Jin Yong? Uh, one of the novels, one of the novels said he's a Tenlong Babu. So actually there's a lot of Buddhist terms in some, most of his books. So these are the heavenly beings, okay? And here you can see the music gods, uh, the dancers, they all, they